you'd been there, it would have been you. You're the one who deserves it. I'm here now. What are you going to do about it? There are other ways to get back at you. <laughs> I see. Hatching plans, are we? Yes. You see, you have a weakness you haven't counted on. I'll use it. And I'll destroy you. He's been charged. He's gone into state until the case comes up. What can you do? That's not the point. If you have a problem, I want to know about it. I thought you weren't interested in Ramberg business. For heaven's sake, Paul Shepard came after you if you were home alone. Well, if you can't see how that concerns me. Of course I can. Mind you, there wouldn't have been any problem if you'd been living here. I am taking your proposal seriously. I just can't be rushed into it. Why not? Because I'm very independent. I don't know that I could cope with another full-time relationship. Want a bit? We'll see. I do love you. I love you too. I'm really happy for you. When did she decide? She phoned me at work today. So you're going to be a grandfather. Yes. I'm glad it worked out. Thanks to you. Must have been last night that did it. Have you been home yet? Not yet. I thought I'd thank you first. Uh, did you read the morning paper? No, I haven't had a chance yet. Look, I was browsing through it at work. Ah, now I know what you do. Yeah. One of those days. Yeah. There it is. Take a look at this. Beautiful section. Charming reading. Well, I'm the morbid type. Uh, what am I supposed to be looking for? Look, there it is. A Mary Louise Dunn. Now, isn't that your Aunt Mary? Yes, it is. I remember how you used to prattle on about her when we first met. You seemed very close. Yes, she was very good to my parents and to me. Well, the funeral... The funeral was this afternoon. Well, that's unfortunate you didn't know. Wouldn't have been very welcome anyway. Well, don't be silly if you were that close. I hadn't been in touch with her since I left home. Oh. It's a bit much, isn't it? After all she did for me when I was growing up. Well, then it's just a pity that you missed your chance to pay your respects and to meet the family again. I've already seen Margaret. She came when I was ill. John had been pestering her for information about you. Well, if you've broken the ice. Oh, no, she made it very clear that she didn't want to see me again. I think she was hurt at the way I just cut off when I left. Oh. So, wouldn't have been much point in my going today anyway. I don't think that side of the family gives a damn about me. recovered. Yes, I've been better for some time. I need to speak to you. Come in. Sit down and I'll organize some coffee. Don't bother. The sooner we get this over and done with the better. Oh, if it's about Aunt Mary, I saw the notice. I would have gone to the funeral, but I didn't see it until last night. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have been welcome anyway. You wouldn't have. How's Val taking it? Oh, she managed to shed a few crocodile tears, but she can't wait to cash in. She. <clears throat> That's why I'm here. Her mother left everything to her, including our house. Mummy and Daddy never ended up buying it. They couldn't afford to. Aunt Mary always kept the rent very low, so... There didn't seem to be any point, and then when they died, she let me go on living there. 
I thought she meant to let me have it eventually. She left it to Val. I'm... I'm being thrown out. I thought Val was fairly well off. She is. Well, she's being very selfish then. <laughs> That's good coming from you. Have you tried discussing it? I wouldn't be here if I hadn't tried everything else. Do you want me to talk to her? As if you could do anything. I know I was wrong, never writing, but there were very good reasons Look, for that. Look, I'm not interested in your excuses. Do you have a family? Husband and children? No. Just me. Oh, I thought you would have by now. I never had a chance for a life of my own. I was too busy nursing mother and father. There was no one else. Yes, I'm sorry. It's a little bit late for that. If there's anything I can do to help, look. I've just been thrown out of the only home that I ever had. And I've been given a week to find someone else. You have ignored me for the last 21 years. Well, now I'm here to collect what's owing to me. And I'm damn well going to get it. What do you want me to do? Buy the house for me. <laughs> I'd like to, but I can't. All my money's tied up at the moment. Well, well you still manage to live rather well. Oh, I don't mean I'm on the breadline. It's just that I've recently gained controlling interest in a company. I had to put myself in debt to do it. I don't have any spare cash. Just my luck. First time I ask you for anything and you're not in a position to help. I'm sorry, I would if I could. I'm sure. As soon as I can, I will buy you a place of your own. Do you honestly expect me to believe that? I've said I would. Look, you promised to keep in touch the night you ran away with David, but that was 21 years ago. And even then, it was only your son that brought us back together again. You didn't keep your promise then, so why should you keep it now? I've said I will help, and I mean it. When? I've got to move out of this house rather quickly. Why don't you move in here until I can afford to buy you a place of your own? There's plenty of room. In fact, the decorators have just finished a bedroom upstairs. The place is big enough for us to have as much or as little to do with each other as, as we please. Why not? Didn't expect me to say yes, did you? The offer was genuine. Well, I have to move somewhere, so why not here? Until you can get me a place of my own. Exactly. As soon as you've got everything packed, give me a call and I'll get Wayne to collect you. Thank you. Any idea what time? Got a few things need doing. Oh, three hours or so. Maybe late afternoon, around five. Okay. Come out the back way, it's quicker. Thank you, Patricia. I'll get your room ready. Bye. You're mad. She's just using you. Pulling one of those, you've got to look after me on one of the family routines. <laughs> That's the pot calling the kettle black. She's my sister, Wayne. So what? You've ignored her for 20 odd years. Oh, you wouldn't understand. Try me. Apparently, Margaret looked after our parents for years. I did nothing, and I should have. She needs help now, and I want to do what I can. It's as simple as that. Well, she didn't have to move in here. You could have put her in Jules flat. That's empty. I don't want to just fob her off. I feel I have to make it up to her for all those years. Playing the Good Samaritan doesn't suit you, Mother. Then you'll just have to get used to it, Wayne, because she's right. I do owe her. And I want you to be civil to her. Try. Don't try. Do it. I heard you didn't have much to bring. The wardrobe in your room's a bit small. I was a bit worried there wouldn't be much space. 
How do you have it? Oh, white. No sugar. Thank you. Well, I... I only bought the bare essentials. Seemed a good chance to have a clean-out. Uh, something I must do when I get the time. Mind you. Not that I had that much to throw away. You always had twice as many dresses as I did when we were kids. Remember how we used to love dressing up? Long time ago. Last few years, I haven't been able to afford all that much. I just had a part-time job when Father first took sick, but then when Mother got ill too, I had to give up work altogether. How did you support yourself? Aunt Mary's money. <sighs> if it hadn't been for her, I don't know what I'd have done. Mother and Father had nothing. And then when they died, I went back to work full-time. There was never much money for clothes after food and living expenses. Took me quite a bit of time to pay off the funerals, too. I've let you down rather badly, haven't I? It's my pride. Always got me into trouble. When things didn't work out with David, I was damned if I was going to let anybody know. <laughs> didn't want to give Mummy and Daddy the opportunity of saying, I told you so. And when I married Gordon, been so long since I had any contact, I, I just couldn't. I used to think about you all and feel guilty about not getting in touch. I always thought you would have married. Oh, that's a long story. I'll tell you about it sometime. You've had a hard life. I'm sorry. From now on, things are going to be different. I'm sorry I have to go out on your first night, but unavoidable, I'm afraid. A formal dinner and I promise to be there. But you'll find the freezer in the kitchen stacked with just about everything you fancy. Oh, that's fine. Look, just because I'm here, it doesn't mean to say we don't go about our own separate lives. Actually, I'd prefer it if we did. You'll be late if you don't get a move on. Yes, I'm going to have a shower now. How about a drink? I'll have a scotch and water, thanks. I'm not thirsty. Mother's been very good taking you in. The least you could do is make yourself useful. But I'm a guest, not a servant. We'll see how long that lasts. I don't particularly want you around. And Mother listens to me a lot. If you know what's good for you, you'll get that drink. decided to go out for dinner. He should have known. I wanted him to keep you company tonight. It's all right. I'm used to being on my own. I'm sorry, Margaret. I'll try not to be too late. Hmm. I forgot my bag. Margaret gone to bed. Yeah, I suppose so. She disappeared when I got in. Night, Cap. Well, I hope you're enjoying my best whiskey. It is charity week, isn't it? But what was so important that you had to rush off tonight? I was watching that. You might have shown Margaret some hospitality on her first night. She won a full-time babysitter as well as free board. Wayne, you may not realise it, but there is such a thing as good manners. Even your company would have been better than spending the night alone. I was as nice as pie to her this afternoon and she bit my head off. I don't see why I should put myself out. 
then I suggest you find a very good reason because she's staying. And I expect you to make her feel welcome. I mean it. Are you finished? Yes, thank you. Mm. Oh, what time do you have to go to work? Well, actually, it's my day off. I was going to go around to Aunt Mary's to pick up the books she left me. A book? Huh. Oh, very generous. Yes. Val's going to be there. <laughs> Cousin Val, eh? She's still as bad as ever? Mm. Why bother, then, for a book? Because I feel as if I've got to do the decent thing. I, I don't want her to have the pleasure of saying that I didn't. I tell you what, I'll come with you. I'd love to see the old place again. And I'll buy you lunch first so we can uh, fortify ourselves. Well, you can come along if you like, but I'd, I'd rather skip lunch. Oh, come on, there's a, a lovely little restaurant in uh, Chapel Street that Patricia, I go to. Patricia, I don't want to be paraded around as your poor relation. That's not what I had in mind. Look, if I walk into your sort of restaurant, my sort of clothes, that's the only thing it can look like. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that to sound unpleasant. It won't be easy for a while, but we'll relax together eventually. So, if that's all it is, I can lend you a dress. No, look, l l let's forget it. Oh, really? I've got a whole wardrobe full of outfits that I never wear. Why don't I bring a few things down and you can see if there's anything you like? <laughs> Val would be livid if you turned up looking like a million dollars. There you are. A choice of five. Oh, I like this. This one's lovely, too. S is it silk? Mm. That colour would look lovely on you. Never did a thing for me. Cinderella getting ready for the ball. Lunch. She'd look lovely in that, won't she? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, anyone will do it. It doesn't really matter. No, no, take the car key. I think I've got a bag that matches that. I'll have a look upstairs. She's like a kid with a new toy. I don't mind. She'll get sick of playing the loving sister soon. You'll find yourself out in the cold. Not everybody treats people the way you apparently do. Don't say I didn't warn you. I don't... It's the same, and yet it's not the same. When I was young, this used to seem like a palace to me. It's just an ordinary house. Well, it all depends on what you're used to, I suppose. To me, it used to stand for extraordinary wealth. Mind you, Aunt Mary did play it up to the hilt. Oh, the way she and Val used to patronise us. Mm. You know... I think that's why I grew up determined to outdo them, to be as wealthy as them, but enjoy it, just to show them. <laughs> Do you remember how Val used to look through the window and make faces at us when we arrived? <laughs> she watches from behind the curtain now. Oh, still pulling faces? Oh, permanently. I think the wind changed. <laughs> Really, it's very pretty, isn't it? It's my favourite thing as a child. Do you think I could have it as a memento? That's typical of you, Patricia. You never bothered to keep in touch, and now Mother's gone, you suddenly pretend to feel something for her. You never even bothered to come to the funeral. I get the feeling I should offer to buy it from you. It seems that money's the only thing you're interested in at the moment. Your family bludged on us for years. Mother was stupid to put up with it. <laughs> oh, you haven't changed, have you, Val? Neither of you. You're as catty as ever. Are you ready? Yes, 
I've got my inheritance. Don't sound so hardly done by. You've got plenty over the years. It's your turn to have her around your neck. Some people actually don't begrudge helping their family. Still, you wouldn't know about that. I don't think of either of you as family. Least of all, you. Well, though, it's been 22 years since we've seen each other. With a bit of luck, it'll be another 22 before we see each other again. At least it's an original edition. <laughs> I remember telling Aunt Mary I couldn't stand Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Perhaps she meant you to sell it. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> oh, I did like the way you spoke to Val. If looks could kill. She asked for it. Thanks, anyway. For sticking up for me. I did enjoy today. Thank you. I enjoyed it, too. And you do look lovely in that dress. Oh. Well... I'd better go and change before dinner. I won't be long. Mm -hmm. It's touching. Do you get some sort of kick out of putting people down? I used to be a bit of a favourite too. But she's gone off me. I'm not surprised. You can get me a drink if you like. Since you're up. I don't like, as a matter of fact. Yesterday, I wasn't sure where I stood. But after today, I know Patricia wants me. She wants a sister. Family contact. I don't think I'm just a flash in a pan. So I wouldn't stir if I were you. Otherwise, I might have to make sure that you go. Get your own drinks from now on. Come over for dinner this evening. No, I don't see Margaret as a problem. Well, I think she's settled in enough by now to accept the fact that we're seeing each other. Oh, Martin, it'll be fine. I'll see you around about seven. OK, bye. Why are you so worried about Margaret settling in before you tell her about you and Martin? She's a big girl, Mother. She was never very keen on him, so uh, gently does it. Why do you think it's time for the big revelation, then? She was very relaxed with me yesterday, and I think we're getting along a lot better. And you can cut out the cynical remarks, thank you very much. Who's being cynical? I just don't want it sprung on her. I feel there's a better chance of her accepting it if I tell her myself. Why is it so important anyway? Because it's important to me. Oh, I've just made the tram. You're not going to go without having any breakfast. Oh, Mr Jenkins won't have a bar of you being late. Well, no need for you to be late. Wayne can drive you in. Oh. So you can sit down and have some breakfast, whether you want it or not. <laughs> it's nice to be looked after. Uh, coffee's still hot. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I thought, pleasant as lunch was yesterday, it's back to the daily grind today. I would have thought it'd be rather interesting working in a bookshop. Well, it's all right if you cut out for it. I find it rather dull. But it's a part-time job and I... Well, I can't afford to give it up. It's the best thing about having money. You're not forced into doing anything you don't want to do. I don't expect me to do it every day. Thank you. I'll see you tonight. Morning, Mr. Jenkins. Ten minutes late, Miss Dunn. Well, it's... It's only the second time since I started working for you. Just wanted to make sure that the third time will be a long way off. I started stock taking yesterday. I didn't get very far. You can take over if you like. Oh. I'll be out the back if you need me. Come over for dinner this evening. No, I don't see Margaret as a problem. Well, I think she's settled in enough by now to accept the fact that we're seeing each other. Oh, Martin, it'll be fine. I'll see you around about seven. OK, bye. Why are you so worried about Margaret settling in before you tell her about you and Martin? She's a big girl, Mother. She was never very keen on him, so uh, gently does it. Why do you think it's time for the big revelation, then? She was very relaxed with me yesterday, and I think we're getting along a lot better. 
And you can cut out the cynical remarks, thank you very much. Who's being cynical? I just don't want it sprung on her. I feel there's a better chance of her accepting it if I tell her myself. Why is it so important anyway? Because it's important to me. Oh, I'll just make the tram. You're not going to go without having any breakfast. Oh, Mr. Jenkins won't have a bar of you being late. I mean, no need for you to be late. Wayne can drive you in. Oh. So you can sit down and have some breakfast whether you want it or not. <laughs> it's nice to be looked after. Uh, coffee's still hot. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I thought pleasant as lunch was yesterday. It's back to the daily grind today. I would have thought it'd be rather interesting working in a bookshop. Well, it's all right if you cut out for it. I find it rather dull. But it's a part-time job and I... Well, I can't afford to give it up. It's the best thing about having money. You're not forced into doing anything you don't want to do. I don't expect me to do it every day. Thank you. I'll see you tonight. Mr. Jenkins. Ten minutes late, Miss Dunn. Well, it's... it's only the second time since I started working for you. Just wanted to make sure that the third time will be a long way off. I started stock-taking yesterday. I didn't get very far. You can take over if you like. Oh. I'll be out the back if you need me. Oh, blast. I got something in my shoe. Here, would you take her up? Sure. What the hell are you playing at? Well, who told you to swim that horse? You don't do a thing without my permission. I didn't give permission. I'm sorry. That lot of good being sorry given to me. It's my fault. I swam her. What's wrong with that? I don't believe in it. Some trainers do, but I don't swim my horses. Yeah, well, I thought it'd be good for a fetlock. You remember what you're employed to do, and that's work in the stables. I'm the train around here. Right, bring her back. And I didn't want to dob Brian in. I'm just here to work. I don't want to cause any trouble. Wayne, you back? Hello. What are you doing home? I've, uh, I've been fired. Oh, no. Didn't Wayne get you there on time? Well, we... we arrived about ten minutes late and Mr. Jenkins got so mad I... I sort of lost my temper with him and he... he fired me. Oh, I'm sorry. He sounds so awful, you wouldn't want to work for him anyway. Well, I... I'm going to go and look for another job this afternoon. I'm not here to live off you, no matter what Val thought. <laughs> As if I'd listen to anything she said. At least you know you don't have to worry. Well, I look for a new job by all means, but you don't have to start this afternoon. And you don't have to take the first thing that comes along. Why don't you wait until you find something that you'd really enjoy? Uh, as, as long as it doesn't take too long. In fact, how about if we get you a new look to go with it? We'll go out shopping later and we'll get you some new clothes to go with the new job. But I'd have to pay you back and I can't afford it. Oh, I'm not worried about all of that. Think of it as all the birthday presents I missed out on giving you. The better you look, the better chance you'll have. It does sort of make sense. Of course it does. Hi. Hi. Want some help getting down? Got some. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. Hey, where did you come from? I was oh. just about to ask you the same thing. Oh. We're staying over at the Reed House. Are you staying here? Yeah, I'm a uh, friend of the owners. I'm just helping out while they're busy. Pity you couldn't come over where we are. The place is full and there aren't enough people to do things, especially men. Well, uh, you should let Mrs. Thompson know. I'm sure she'll put someone in charge if you ask her. Huh? Are you offering? Never know your luck. That's what we were hoping. Come on. Gee, you don't waste any time, do you? Why let an opportunity go past, Brian? You're buying her a whole new wardrobe. Keep your voice down. She's just upstairs. <gasps> 
Boy, when you go overboard, you go all the way, don't you? All right. Let's have this out. Why are you so against me helping her? I can tell a con a mile off, that's all. Yes, well, I suppose you would be able to do that, wouldn't you? I'm not being smart. There's no need for you to be. I just think she's out to get what she can out of you. She has not asked for one thing since she's been here. There's nowhere else for her to go. She has no one else. And now she's just lost her job. She is my sister, Wayne, and whether you like it or not, I intend to help her. She'll have her confidence back in no time once I get her some decent clothes to wear and introduce her to a few of my friends. She'll get on very well with them. <laughs> so that's it. You've got a new dummy. Someone you can train and dress up. I suppose you have been suffering from withdrawal symptoms since Angie's been independent. Ah, oh, come on, admit it. You love dishing out the money when you want to. Makes you feel good. It's certainly got nothing to do with your conscience. Never noticed you knocking it back. I haven't got a conscience either. At least I'm honest about it. If I were you, I'd keep that to yourself. I'm sorry to trouble you, Mr. Jenkins, but I'm Margaret Dunn's nephew. Oh, yes. I know probably nothing can be done about it, but she's terribly upset. Oh, really? Yes. When she came home... When she came home and, and told me she'd uh, been sacked, well, it's really knocked the stuffing out of her. I wondered whether there was anything I could do. Well, no. Uh, I'm surprised you say that she was sacked. She resigned. It came completely out of the blue. She resigned? In a rather dramatic way, if I may say so, too. She informed me that she'd always hated the job. Rather than rot, I think that was the word, she was going to look for something else. Something that suited her personality. I see. It seems odd she didn't at least give you some notice. Oh, that came up too. But she informed me that I could keep my money. She had ample means of support. And all she wanted was to be free of here as soon as possible. I was taken by surprise, as I said. But it did. I'm sorry if she was rude to you. She wasn't exactly rude. Certainly for Margaret. She was outspoken. I do hope she knows what she's doing. I'm sure she does. Thanks, Vito. Wish her luck. She doesn't let up, does she? The only thing we've got to entertain us is the television set. And that's gone on the blink, too. You look, I'll have somebody over to see to it as quickly as I can. Well, look, what you really need is someone in charge over there. Nobody seems to know what they're doing. Yeah, well, I, I do apologise, but you see, we haven't been as busy as this before. Well, if you don't do something about it, I don't think you will be again. If, well, I'll have it fixed by tonight, and thank you very much for bringing it to my attention. Is that easy mechanics car? Oh! Hello? I gather Jill's had a word to you. Yes, she has. What you said to us seemed reasonable. I, uh... I know I can't take back the things I said to you. But I can apologize. And I can thank you for giving me a go up here. It was the last thing I expected from anyone, least of all you. Well, I'm, I'm pleased it's worked out, and I must say, you do seem to be pulling the weight. I ran into a couple of guests from the Reed House. Well, they didn't seem too happy. Is everything all right over there? Oh, yes, I think so. I mean, Alan Pascoe's very overworked lately, so I suppose things could be a little bit lax over there. It'd help if there was someone there to uh, keep an eye on the running of the place. Or like me, for instance. Why you? Well, you know, I'd be good at it. And, um, I wouldn't be asking for any more money. Yeah. But why you? Well, I'm wasting my time working in the stables with Bert. I really don't know anything about horses. But I do know about running things. And I need 
to get my life back on the rails again. Give myself some sense of purpose. And I think working over there would help me do it. Well then, let's make it a trial period. You get your things over there this afternoon and you can start tomorrow. Where's Mother? Oh, she stayed in town. Some business to do with Rambo. She'll be home soon. Good. Sorry to hear you'd lost your job. Yes, it came as quite a shock. He's very unreasonable. Mr. Jenkins? Mm. I thought he was very pleasant. I know you're lying. I went to see your boss. You can't be sure he was telling the truth, sir. You'll never really know what happened. I know what you're up to. I could see it a mile off. You're really working to get Mother around your little finger, aren't you? Don't judge other people by yourself. Are you denying that you're out to get what you can from her? I'll accept what's owing to me and what's offered to me. You're suggesting I'm trying to manipulate Patricia. Aren't you? No, I'm not. I've no intention of taking her down. No matter what you thought last night, she'd never choose you over me. I wouldn't count on it. You're forgetting I'm her sister. And when it comes to the crunch, you're not even a blood relative, no matter how many years you've been calling a mother. You're pathetic. Do you know that? You don't just need to have mother on side to stay here, you know. You? No. No, not me. Her boyfriend. Oh, she's seeing someone? Sure is. You might even remember him. The name Martin Healy ring a bell. I can't believe that you're seeing him again. It all happened very simply, really. John found out he was his father and managed to track him down. That's how I met him again. <laughs> he and John got along so well together that John even joined the Air Force. It was only a matter of time before we found ourselves thrown together. Then I can't say I'm sorry. Actually, I've invited him for dinner tonight. Oh. I was going to talk to you this afternoon, but Wayne jumped the gun, apparently. The man is an arrogant pig. He's only cared for himself. I mean, what does he want from me? What is he after? I don't understand why you're so upset. Well, I agree. I felt very strongly about him when I first met him again, but well, I realised after all these years that I was as much to blame for what happened as he was. Well, don't forget, it's nearly 22 years ago. Well, I'm not having anything to do with him, and I'm certainly not having dinner with him tonight. Oh, all right, calm down. I didn't think you'd take it this badly. I understand that you care about me and what happened, but why are you so angry after all these years? Everything between Martin and I is fine, truly. Don't you think it's time to forgive and forget? I'll never forgive him. You only know half of it. What do you mean? The man is an arrogant pig. He wasn't just having an affair with you. You were just a silly child to him. He was having an affair with me at the same time. What the hell are you talking about? I'm sorry. I lost my temper. I, I shouldn't have said anything. But you did. I, uh... Oh, don't try and backpedal. I'm not a fool. I wasn't going to. Oh, what's the point of going into it? You brought it up. It, it was years ago. The details are unimportant. It's what it shows what's important. What sort of man Martin is. Or what sort of woman you are. I suppose so. I... I'm not proud of it. The full story, Margaret. All right. I'll ask Martin. Tricia. I want the full story. The last thing I ever meant to do was to harm you. Quite frankly, I don't see why you're making such a fuss. You have got to be joking. No. Okay, Margaret and I had an affair. So what? It had no effect on you and me at the time. How am I supposed to know that? Because I just told you. Okay, you want to know what happened, all right? Oh, do you blame me? Okay, well, let's go out by the pool. Pete's in his room. I'd prefer to keep him out of it.
Margaret first came to see me as soon after we discovered you were pregnant. She was worried. As a wife and child, I couldn't marry you, and with you only 17, Margaret wanted to make sure that I did the right thing. I met her once or twice to discuss it, and we were attracted to each other. Well, she felt badly about it at first, of course. But that had no bearing on how I felt about you. We'd finished by then anyway. Oh, you'd got what you wanted by then. I know you're upset, but it wasn't like that, though. You really find this very difficult to take seriously at all, don't you? I'm trying to be reasonable about it, which is more than you're being. No harm was done by it then. Why agonize about it now? No harm? Do you have any idea what I went through? I was terrified at the thought of terminating my pregnancy. Going to the dance that night, knowing what you'd arranged. Knowing what I would be sneaking out. Whose idea was it? What do you mean? The termination. Whose idea was it? Yours or Margaret's? Oh, come on. You don't forget a thing like that. Where were you when you discussed it? In bed? Getting hysterical is not going to help. It'll help me. Whose idea was it? Margaret's. She was very keen that I should do the right thing by you. Oh, so she had an affair with you. <laughs> oh, you two really deserved each other. Oh, Patricia. Patricia! Just leave me alone! Patricia? Sorry. I hope there's no trouble between you and Mother. Nothing we can't sort out. That's a pity. One thing that hasn't changed, I still tend to over-dramatise things. I was so worried. I didn't know what to expect. Half an hour ago, I think I would have thrown you out. I really had a go at Martin. But I thought about it on the way home. You're both right. It was a long time ago. Yesterday meant so much to me. I, I started to feel close to you again. Forgot the grudges I'd been holding and then when you went out earlier all I could think of was well I've, I've ruined everything just when it was beginning to sort itself out you haven't ruined anything we're adults well most of the time it'd be silly to let anything spoil what we've achieved <laughs> well I'd better go and ring Martin and let him know I'm Calm down. We've got a dinner on tonight. Would well, you think that's wise? Oh, of course. It's best to face the situation as soon as possible and clear the air. Are you in for dinner, Wayne? Uh, do you want me to be? No reason why not. I know how you feel about Martin. But I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. I hope you can too. I can try. Good. Why don't you go into the kitchen and make a start? I'll be in as soon as I've rang Martin. All right. What's going on? You're right. She's a user. Why the loving sister's bit then? You'll see. Soon enough. Hello, darling. I'm ringing to apologize. 
Could you get that, please? And make yourself scarce for a few minutes. I wish I knew what you were up to. No. We'll talk about it tomorrow when we've got the place to ourselves. Mother's inside. I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. I took my car in the garage. Always did uh, shout first and think later. It's okay. At least you calmed down. I knew you would. It was a long time ago. Hmm. Yes, too long. Well, I'd better go and check on the meat. Don't want to see it burning. Ah, oh, just in time. You can keep Martin company while I'm looking at the dinner. Martin. Why don't you fix Martin a drink? I won't be long. I'm sure we can behave as reasonably as Patricia. I'm sure we can. What are you drinking? You fix the kettle, I'll get it. Hello, Palmer House. Hello there. Visiting, are you? Oh, hi. Yeah, we're just keeping each other company while the men are away. Oh, hen's party, huh? Not quite. I'll get Beryl for you. Oh, before you do, Paul's doing fine, if you're interested. Angela? Oh, that's good. It was a bit rough for the first few days, but he's relaxing now. <laughs> if nothing else, he's a draw card. What do you mean? He's very popular with the young ladies. <laughs> I'll have to put him on the brochure as an added attraction. Yeah, y you should. How's he handling it? Lapping it up. I've given him a job running the guest quarters. Put his charm to good use. Yeah, well, I'll get Beryl for you. Don't want to waste your money talking about him. It's Fiona. Hello. Bring up for a gossip, did you? Is Angela OK? Sure. Why? She went all strange on me. Did I say something? I think I scared Margaret away. I, I don't think she's prepared to be quite as friendly as I am. Well, it'll take time. Shame she doesn't take after you. Well, if you can calm down in the space of a trip between my place and here, I must say your call surprised me. Guess I'm just the reasonable type. Guess you are. You know, I'm really rather tired. I think it must be the champagne. I don't like to be rude, but would you mind if we called it a night? I'll help you clear up if you like. No, 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 it's all right. Mrs. Burroughs can do it in the morning. You're sure? Yes, yeah. No need to see me, Anne. Thank you for a lovely meal. I'll see you tomorrow. You're on the go early. Yes, I've got an interview at 9.30. Receptionist. Office in the city. Sounds good. Have you called a cab? Yes, from upstairs. I, um... I felt rather uncomfortable about last night. I don't know about you. I thought it was fine. Martin made an effort. I didn't find it easy seeing him again. Even after all these years. I have more right to be resentful than you do, you know. We'll talk about it when you get home. I don't want you to be late. The last thing I want to do is to hurt you. You know that, don't you? Of course I do. I hope you and Martin can sort it out. I want you both around. It's important to me. That off in the clouds. I've been ringing at your front door for about 10 minutes. <laughs> well, that's a slight exaggeration. Oh, it's a bit hard to hear out here when the door's closed. We need to get a bell. <laughs> or when you're a million miles away. <laughs> it's gone cold. I'll just make some more. 
Don't worry about me. I had about ten cups with breakfast. Oh, I wouldn't mind some more. I didn't get much sleep last night. Uh, Kevin said to say he was sorry. Not for that stupid prank. That is what's worrying you, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. A couple of idiots. What is it, love? I'm scared there, all that. I thought I'd got Paul out of my system. I hadn't thought about him for months. I don't know. When he was, uh, when he was going all right, I, it was easy not to think about him. I, I almost pretend he didn't exist. And, uh, and then when things started to go wrong for him, I, well, I, I felt sorry for him. I, and then... You, uh... You think you still love him? I know I do. I, I don't want to hurt Rob. I, I wouldn't do that. I, I just keep thinking about Paul all the time. You uh, certainly have a knack of complicating <laughs> things for yourself. Actually, uh, I thought it might be something like that. I'm a crafty devil. Well, if, well, if you caught on to it... Oh, don't worry about Rob. He'd have to put it right in front of his face before he'd realise. What are you going to do? I won't hurt Rob. I know you won't. I'm sorry to drag you into this. I just had to have someone to talk to. Glad you did. You know I'm always here if you need me. And I won't go any further. Oh, they're both so damn smug. Think they've got me exactly where they want me. Should have heard Martin yesterday. Couldn't understand why I was so upset. Can you believe that? It was all so long ago. Well, not for me, it wasn't. What are you going to do about it? And Margaret this morning. I didn't want to hurt you. Oh, God. You know, I think she's getting quite used to living the good life. Not having to worry about money. Given time, she could come to rely on it. There's no point in throwing her out now. It wouldn't mean anything. But in a few months, when she's used to it, and she'll miss it. In a few months, you'll probably have forgotten about it. It'll be loving sisters again. Oh, no, I won't forget about it. I don't care how long it takes, they're going to pay. What about lover boy? What are you going to do to him? I'm going to tell him I've decided to marry him. Love is very strange. It can come and go. It can happen when you are young or old when it comes it comes from nowhere when it comes it changes your life sons and daughters love and laughter tears and sadness and happiness Yeah.